Hi everyone, Craig from Arms and Armor and the Oakshot Institute. And today's subject is going to be small medieval knives. Sometimes they're by knives where they were part of a suite with a weapon itself, or they might have just been, you know, a daily use type of piece or knife for anybody from that period. Uh, in the Oakshot collection, we have a particularly nice little grouping of these knives that Ewart and Sybil were able to collect over their lifetimes. And we're gonna use some of those to illustrate elements of how a medieval knife was made, look at these in particular, and then also in future episodes, we'll be talking about how to make them uh, today and do some examples and show some things about how we make the small knives that we do. Interspersed with this, we will show you some pieces we've made today that are replica small knives, uh, but it really, you can learn a lot by looking at these originals in detail. And uh, we have a nice collection here, very interesting pieces that come to us, and many of them are going to be kind of unique in a sense that they don't look exactly like a modern knife. Many times today we have a tendency to overbuild our utensils, as it were, and so these pieces will kind of illustrate some of the economics of the Middle Ages where you would try and preserve your materials as, as much as possible so the blades will be smaller and maybe thinner than we would think of, but they are very useful little tools that you could use every day of your life. So as we look at the collection here, you can see that there's quite a variety. It has several different types of knives and the lengths do vary, but again, they're all very small and the type of knives that you would see in everyday use in the medieval and Renaissance period. So when we look in, at these knives, even when we take the largest knife that we have in the group, uh, it really is a small knife for use in the hand, uh, could be for eating, uh, work, all those elements, but it is a uh, very well put together piece, but the details are small. It is not a big honking uh, battle knife, as it were, in the context of how these things were put together at all. The blades are very thin, we'll look at that in detail, and some of them are particularly small, where you can even see the handle, while very well made and nicely finished, has some detail on it, but it's just a pencil, or, or less than that, as far as the sizing on it. So a piece like this, while uh, would be very delicate, but it would also show all the design elements of a larger knife. So you can see that they really designed these and made them as they did larger pieces, but with all the attention to detail still, and these would have been the kind of thing that you had that you would show off some of your status by how nicely decorated your knife is. Uh, we will look at details like here where we have some uh, uh, carving on the top of the grip, or in this particular piece a little later, you can see that has got kind of a stacked grip where it has uh, pieces probably of bone or antler in there uh, stacked on the tang itself to create the small knife. Now, uh, these detailed knives are particularly nice that they have a lot of detail on them. Many times when these are found, they are just rusty bits. You can see that in some of the mud larking videos online and such. The first knife that we'll look at here in detail has a very nicely carved uh, grip where it has little uh, scallops taken out all the way up, almost looking like a uh, carved branch, like a piece of bamboo almost, in a sense. Uh, it has a small wooden uh, grip that is peened at the top. The blade itself is fairly well made. It has a slight back edge on this surface here, but not too much. And it does have a small little mark in the blade for the maker. Uh, you can see that it does have a, a bolster that is part of the grip, and that is the metal itself that goes up, and then the tang 
extends out in that very thin area right to the end. And we'll look at some of those constructional things as we go along here and talk about the different types of tangs and how they come together. But this particular knife, you can see again, very small, but would be an exceptionally useful little tool to have on you all the time, whether you're trying to cut a piece of string, grab a piece of meat, you know, slice something up, a piece of fruit or something. It's a particularly nice little knife that has a almost sharp edge on it still, uh, though it has been worn down. You can see that this probably was in some way or shape or form uh, excavated at some point, uh, just because it's a little rough, but it is a very nice little knife. The second knife we'll look at has a broader blade, very short. This is possibly cut off at some point where the blade broke and then they just uh, ground down the end on it to make it a completely useful knife, but uh, not as long as it was in its original state. Uh, it does have another blade mark on there. So uh, oftentimes we will see those on these small knives, especially in the uh, medieval period where every little uh, maker would probably have a strike that they would put in the blade to uh, show that they had made it. And this one has a bolster and a integral uh, butt so that it does not seem like the butt actually is on a tang as opposed to where the other one came through with a very thin tang. This is what you would call a scale. So these pieces of wood are very thin little pieces of wood that have a full tang running between it that is the same shape as the grip itself. This type of knife you can see is going to be very sturdy, very durable. This is probably a little more common than what they call the whittle tang or the thin ones, but it is very much a piece that is uh, going to be sturdy and durable throughout its lifetime. Uh, and the wood is held on by three little pins that you can just see here and it has some very nice little detail on the pommel where you have two little cutouts that are open to the end and then a little uh, nut, nut or knob on the end there that is integral to it but it is mirroring what it would be if it was a pommel nut. So these particular little knives like this are very useful but they are oftentimes as I said earlier uh, a way to express a little bit of fashion or to show some detail to them. So as we go along, you can see all those little nuances that they do to them to make them the best kind of piece they can be for what they were. Uh, sometimes these would be called penny knives. I would guess that most of these would cost more than that uh, because of the detailing on them. But in the period, you do see some uh, pretty simple little knives that were probably very, very inexpensive because almost everyone in society would need at least a small knife to use as a utensil. So as we go along in these videos, you will see more of these knives. And as I said, we'll look at making some of these uh, style of knives and how we'd go about that in the shop. And I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day.